I didn't know anything about this microphone when I got it. I was actually looking at the Rode NT1, but they didn't have any in stock. And the guy was like, well, what about this one? And I was like, okay, I bought it. Good story. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It needs phantom power. It's very sensitive. And that's it. And as always, I'm featuring microphones for this use case for people making stuff on YouTube, podcasters, live streamers, etc. If you're a musician or a singer or something, this video probably won't be of much use to you. I'm recording through the Rodecaster Pro and into Adobe Audition. The gain is set to 13 and no audio processing is applied. I don't think I'm gonna apply any audio processing or post-processing in this video, just so you can hear how the microphone sounds in its native state. There is a high pass switch on the microphone and it's currently disabled. There's also a negative 20 dB pad for the microphone. And of course I'm not using that because that would be stupid. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into my top five best things about the AKG C214, starting with number one, it's a bit of a combo, the looks and the build quality. I like the way this microphone looks. If you're tired of phallic microphones, here's something a bit different. Also, the build quality is fantastic. There's no gaps, there's no seams, there's no plastic, except for the little switches. There's little Phillips screws on the bottom holding things together. Let's move on. Number two, the accessories. In addition to the microphone, you get a really nice shock mount. You get a hard case. You get a really high quality, dense foam windscreen that does a fantastic job of rejecting plosives and also bringing down some of the high end. You also get some silica gel packets. Before I get into the number three best thing about the AKG C214, jump down in the comments and let me know how you think it sounds. It's a polarizing microphone. The number three best thing, it's sensitive. You don't need a mic activator. You don't need the best audio interface to get an appropriate level of gain from it. Conventional wisdom is that condenser microphones are too sensitive. They pick up too much ambient noise. Is this true? I'm actually gonna test this more extensively in a future video, but the short answer is, it depends. Number four best thing, the proximity effect. I think this microphone sounds really good if you get close to it. It can get a little bassy, but you have that low cut filter to cut out some of those low frequencies. And when you engage that high pass filter and get really close to the microphone, I feel like I, my voice sounds like it really sounds. If you want a voiceover microphone without breaking the bank, well, depending on what you consider bank breaking, this might be a good choice. Number five best thing about this microphone is the sound. I realize it's not for everybody. The highs might be a little bit too harsh, a little bit too metallic, but it is super clear, super articulate, and has a really nice smooth blow end, in my opinion. Let's get into the five worst things about the AKG C214. Number one worst thing about the AKG C214 is the sound. What the f***? You just said the sound was the... I know. I'm just acknowledging that the sound is a bit polarizing. The highs might be a little too brittle. They might be a little bit too harsh. The scooped mids. Again, it's not for everybody, but no microphone is. So really the point is, test it for yourself. Listen to it on a bunch of different voices. See if it works for you. Also, the really detailed articulate sound can be a problem if it's picking up a lot of the gross mouth sounds. You really do have to be careful how you address this microphone or get some good plugins to try to remove some of that noise. Number two worst thing about this microphone are the plosives. I'm kind of getting tired of emphasizing plosives and microphones. I feel like every microphone is gonna suffer from plosives if you talk right into the top of the microphone and go, Peter Parker pops some popcorn, but who does that? Number three worst thing about the microphone, it's a condenser microphone and some people just can't get around that. People will insist it's too sensitive, picks up too much ambient noise, I can't get it to sound good. So maybe it's not the best choice for people in acoustically challenged environments. Maybe not the best choice for game streamers. Maybe not the best choice for people who just cannot or will not get close enough to the microphone to turn the gain down so it's not picking up every thing in the room. Why am I cussing so much? Number four, I'm really picking nits here. The grill is a little bit flexible. It bends a bit. I can't see this being a problem unless you just trash all your stuff. Number five worst thing about the AKG C214, it's expensive. It's not the most expensive microphone. It's about $600 less than the C414. But in comparison to some of its close competitors like the Rode NT1A, which by all accounts is a fantastic sounding mic, probably a bit more neutral than this, also comes with a lot of great accessories. It doesn't look as good. And then there's also the Lewitt 440 Pure. Both those mics are a little bit less expensive than the C214. Well, there you go. There's my list of the five best and five worst things about the AKG C214. Let me know in the comments what you think. As always, I appreciate you watching this video. If you want to see some more microphone comparisons and other audio stuff, maybe check this playlist, which is floating around my head. Anyway, see you in another video. Damn, there's like air traffic control over here now. 
ba ba do ba di ba do do ba di ba do b b d b d do ba di ba do